With the Vancouver Canucks set to take on the Edmonton Oilers in the second round this week, this is a must change for the Vancouver Canucks to advance to the third round. We'll get into this later on this episode. Before I start, I just want to say to thousands of you watching that aren't subscribed, if you're enjoying this Canucks content and you never want to miss another episode, where we cover prospects, game reactions, previews, anything you can think of, make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button. We'll be here all season long giving you updates from all around the Canucks. But with that, let's hop straight into the first topic today, which is Canucks Round 2 Preview. Now, obviously, the Canucks are taking on the Vancouver, or uh, taking on the Edmonton Oilers in the second round. The Canucks finished the season 50 23. 9 with 109 points, first in the Pacific, and they also defeated the Nashville Predators in six games. The Oilers were just behind them in the Pacific, 49 27 6 with 104 points, and they defeated the Los Angeles Kings. Obviously, Vancouver was 4 0 against the Edmonton Oilers this year, so it's going to be a tight matchup and it's going to be one for the ages. Now, the first thing I wanted to put out was an ESPN article where just senior writers, staff writers, anything in between did a poll on who they think would win this series. If you look right at the bottom of this, 23 of 24 people had the Edmonton Oilers winning the series against the Vancouver Canucks. Shout out to the one writer that said the Canucks would win in seven. That's Ryan S. Clark. Couldn't agree with him more. And this is just the point that the Canucks are going to have to prove everyone wrong going into the series. When you do look at this, obviously the lines, you could pause, you can have a look at it. The lines are staying pretty much the same on the projected lineups going in. Obviously, Thatcher Demko will not be playing game one. So, just honestly, Griffin, what's your thoughts on this lineup? And what do you think the Canucks are going to have to do to kind of get this X-Factor lineup going? I definitely have to have a few players step up, one of them being Elias Pettersson. We've touched on it before, how frustrated that us and fans have been getting with him. We know he's banged up a little bit, but like we've said, it's the playoffs. you got to weather the storm and just push through. Another one that would be – another two players that would be awesome to see step up a little bit that have been absent since game one is Batman and Robin themselves, and that's Dakota Joshua and Connor Garland. They've been stellar the whole season where they were the dynamic duo that couldn't be stopped in, uh, out in the Pacific. And now they got to carry it on through the playoffs and just show up in this series and against the critical series against a great Edmonton team. Yeah, because the biggest thing, and I agree with everything you said, that second line in Hoagliner, Pedersen, and Mikheyev just has been struggling. Yes, they are snake bitten. Yes, they're just getting their chances, but they can't get onto the score sheet. And facing a team like the Edmonton Oilers, where the goal scoring is going to be higher, this is going to be a faster pace, I think it will open up a little more for guys like this and to get them on the board. But I definitely agree with the Dakota Joshua and Connor Garland needing to step up, like you said, Batman and Robin really need to find their groove, get everything going, and figure things out. Maybe we see just a situation where Pedersen puts put on the line between the two of them. It really comes down to how these teams are going to face off. The speed's going to be a lot faster. I think the physicality will stay the same as both teams aren't fans of each other. So seeing these X factors come into the lineup, if that's maybe Elias Pedersen, Dakota Joshua, Connor Garland, whoever it might be, we're going to have to see someone other than just JT Miller become the heroic just savior for this team in a round. Now, the biggest thing looking at this as well is the goaltending go in. So, obviously, the Canucks have been dealing with injuries. I mean, they're looking at the rookie goaltender and saying, hey, you guys are taking the first or you're taking the second round again. Obviously, he has been great. 170 goal against average, 938 save percentage. And when playing with the Abbotsford, 16-11-6 to with a 907 save percentage and four shutouts and five if you count the one he had in the playoffs. And just what's your thoughts of the goaltending going into round two? I think the goaltending is really solid going in around two. I think they have a three-headed monster with Demko, DeSmith, and Shilovs. Obviously, Demko isn't going to be back for a little bit, and DeSmith is apparently the backup now over Shilovs, who has seemed to have won the sorting job, and the fans' hearts. He's been great. He's slain one foe already with the, with Nashville, having taken care of business there. Now he's ready to go on to the next round and take on these feisty Oilers with McDavid and Dreisaitl and Hyman ready to try and thwart their plans. Yeah, because that's the biggest thing. I mean, you look at the goaltending, and I wanted to give a shout-out to Canucks management when they got Shilovs back in 2019. As you can see, that was a six-round pick. A lot of the time, that's just a throw-in. Who would have thought that a six-round pick, 156 overall pick, would be coming in and the starting goaltender for the Vancouver Canucks going into round two. But I think goaltending is going to be very important. It was last series. We've seen close games when it was one to nothing, two to one wins. Quick games in overtime. Shilov stood his head, and he needs to stay like this going into the next round. And another big thing the Canucks really need to focus on 
is not getting on the penalty kill. We've seen the Canucks spent a lot of time shorthand in the first round, but was 20 for 22 on the penalty kill. That penalty, you can't, you can't be taking 22 penalties against a team full of, and I'll say it, full of merchants like Connor McDavid, Jarai Saddle, Hyman. Yes, these guys are going to put up even strength points, but the problem, once they get on the penalty kill, they get the open ice, they get the man advantage. This is going to be lethal. Yes, the Canucks have been good, like I said, on the penalty kill. The power play needs to step up, but I think this is going to really come down to a couple people stepping up and the power play and penalty kill need to be at their peak. And Griffin, what's your thoughts on this as well? I think you're absolutely right there. The penalty kill has been stellar. The power play definitely needs to step up. This is the playoffs where the two biggest X factors are goaltending and special teams. Vancouver has the goaltending covered in spades, it seems. Now the power play just has to pick it up. Yeah, uh, JT Miller, like you said, has been awesome, but it can't just be him and Quinn Hughes carrying the load. Lynn Holm has uh, been a hero throughout uh, the series. He's got to do that again in this series. Pedersen has to show up as well as uh, the big guys with uh, Garland and Joshua putting up more points um, and everybody else uh, chipping in. Uh, we'd love to see Hoaglander get in there as well. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of time when that second line really finds their groove. I think just one of them needs to get on the score sheet. I don't care if it hits off McKayev's head and goes in the back of the net. Obviously, I want him to be fine, but I want to see one of them just get the monkeys off their back and set everything straight. And if not, I think they're really going to have to look at changing up this line. But we did see Rick Tockett just kind of talk on the penalty kill, the power play, everything in between. He said, who's kidding who? We can't get in the penalty fest against Edmonton. We can't give them four, five, or six power plays. Hopefully, we're allowed to play the game five on five. Hopefully, it's not a penalty fest, but that's on us too. And I agree with this. Like I said, when you look at the Oilers' power play, this is one of the most lethal in the league. When you look at the Canucks' penalty kill, this is one of the best in the playoffs. So it's going to be interesting to see how these two match up as foes going into round two. And just what's your take on this and how many games do you think it's going to take the Canucks to advance to the third round? I think it's going to be a special teams battle. You have one of the most lethal power plays, like you said, in the league, in the regular season, and in the postseason. McDavid is an absolute assassin out there, and Dreisaitl is just a monster. But Vancouver has been amazing on the penalty kill. There was a lot of times where usually I would be like on the edge of my seat, stressed out that Vancouver would be giving up another power play goal. But unlike the regular season, they've really shored that up in the postseason. And really, uh, that was a big point of emphasis going into the postseason because they knew that was a big uh, struggle in the regular season. They really shored that up and made sure to not have as many stressful moments during those penalty kills. Yeah, no, I agree with you completely. And the biggest thing, too, is the power play needs to be woken up. Something needs to give here. Like you said, so many times special teams wins the series, and I think it's really going to boil down to who can come out of round two with the better penalty kill and the better power play, which isn't obvious, but you guys know what I'm trying to say. I have the Canucks winning in six this series. I think it's not going to be. It will be close, but I think the Canucks have the momentum. They have the fans on their back. They know that they need to prove everyone wrong. Like I said, when you look at this list alone, 23 of 24 people have the Canucks losing, which is just absurd to me. This is a team that was top in the Pacific. This is a team that beat the Edmonton Oilers four out of four times this year. It's just a matter of time. Canucks fans be excited. The Canucks are excited. Everyone's excited. This is going to be a hell of a round. What are you guys' thoughts on everything like this? How many games do you think it will take the Canucks to advance? Who do you think needs to step up? What would you want the lines to be? Let us know down in the comments. And speaking of comments, we'll get into everyone's favorite topic, comments of the day. The comment today comes from Callum McKenzie. He says, go Canucks, go. Great content, guys. It's awesome that you guys are enjoying this content. It's awesome just to see you guys coming back each video. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to go down and leave a like, subscribe if you want to keep up with content. Leave a comment too because you could be on the next episode of Canucks Digest as comment of the day. But I've been your host, Mark, alongside my co-host, Griffin. Take care.